Donc en juillet 24, il y a une cérémonie officielle, la première de l'histoire des Jeux qui se déroule ici. Les athlètes, ils s'entraînent là et ils rentraient par la porte marathon. Ils faisaient le tour comme ça. Paris is preparing to hold the Olympics. Exactly 100 years since the French capital last hosted the Games. Il y a tellement eu de, de grands champions ici que... Et c'est dommage qu'elle ait un peu délaissé maintenant. Hein. Much has been forgotten of the 1924 Olympics. But records were broken, champions were made, and more women athletes took part than ever before. Ici, on a eu euh, particulièrement un nombre important de nageuses qui, qui ont participé aux épreuves olympiques et qui ont eu aussi euh, également des, des médailles. So what's left of the 1924 stadiums? And will any of them be used again in the 2024 Games? We are at an important site. We are at the 1924 Olympic Stadium, where a century ago, in the stands, spectators watched football and rugby matches, and athletics too, of course. For three months, it was the nerve center of the Games. One hundred years after the 1924 Olympics, these local high school students are exploring one of the most important sites, the Colombe Stadium. The opening ceremony took place here. I know it's kind of hard to imagine, but there were 20,000 people between the lampposts, 20,000 people standing tightly together. Over three months, from May to July 1924, 44 countries took part in 126 events during the eighth Olympics of the modern era. The United States were the overall winners. They won the most medals. Behind them, Finland which had an important school of athletics at the time. Ritola and Paavo Nurmi won the most events. Known as a flying Finn, Paavo Nurmi won five gold medals. A rich history on their doorstep that most of these students knew nothing about. The grandstand still exists. We're here walking around it. We're following the stands, it's like archaeological exploration. It's impressive to find out what took place back then. And today there's still something left right here. Big things took place right near where we live. A century on, the Colomb Stadium has benefited from a significant renovation project. It will host the Olympics for the second time. This summer, the field hockey matches will take place here. For a long time, the site was under threat. It was believed to be abandoned, but in the end, it's reborn. What's interesting is that we can imagine that in the years to come, there will always be sports in Colombe, and let's hope high-level and amateur sports will be practiced here. The former Tourelle swimming pool Today, Georges Valerie Pool has also been renovated 100 years after it opened. It was built for the 1924 Games and was inaugurated in June 1924, a month before the events took place. It was the first Olympic pool constructed in line with Olympic standards at the time, with spectator stands and 50 meters long. It became known for the exploits of the famous swimmer Johnny Westmuller, who in 1924 won four medals, three of which were gold, in this Olympic pool. The American swimmer Johnny Weissmuller, future Tarzan on the big screen, was a star. Women swimmers took part in more events than in previous games including backstroke, 
In 1924, women could only compete in a few sports. Out of the more than 3,000 athletes, only 135 were women. Swimming was a masculine domain. These women were pioneers in their events, and they contributed to promoting women athletes. After 18 months of works, the Georges Valerie Pool will soon reopen. It will not host any Olympic events, but will play a role in the 2024 Games. This pool will be used for training ahead of the swimming events, the swimming marathon and the triathlon. It will host athletes for these training events just before the Games begin. Now that it's been rejuvenated, the pool will continue beyond its centenary. The Jacques Anquetil Velodrome also has a long history. It is the only existing site to have hosted two Olympics. The track was built at the end of the 19th century for the 1900 Olympic Games. The stands were designed by Eiffel. At the time, there was a lawn and a big tree in the middle. It was a very popular sport. There were huge crowds. We can see that on archive images. It was used again in 1924 for the Olympics, but now it's no longer fit for the Olympic Games. 100 years ago, Lucien Michard shone at the Olympics. The French cyclist was champion for speed when he was 21. France also won the somewhat surprising tandem event. Some members of the French national team still come. INSEP is not far and their track is small. In the summer when it's sunny, they come to train here. Otherwise, they're at Saint-Quentin. When we see people from the French team here, we stand on the sides because they go very fast. Too old, the track cannot host the 2024 Games. But members of Paris Veterans Cycling Club continue to keep the spirit alive. I was world champion in 2010 in Portugal, and in 2011, and 2012 in England. 89-year-old Raymond trains every week on this legendary track. There were so many important champions here. It's a shame it's been left to deteriorate. We're in Paris, and yet it's wonderful to be in the middle of the woods. It's rare. It must stay like this. Raymond will be watching when the Olympic cyclists whiz past the velodrome on July 27th during the time trial road cycling event. He has no plans to put away his bike anytime soon. As long as I'm still standing. The day when I'll no longer be able to get on or off, I'll have to stop. But for now, I haven't lost my balance, so I'm carrying on. Northwest of Paris, on the River Seine, another group of enthusiasts are keeping the memory of the 1924 Games alive. The rowing events took place here. The French didn't really shine. It was the Americans who had the monopoly over the rowing. They shone like they always do. France won three silver medals. The rowing was a big hit with spectators. There were a lot of people back then. They were really interested in the rowing. It was a bit out of the ordinary, I think. For towns like Argenteuil, Colombe, Jean Villiers, it was a chance for people to discover a sport they knew nothing about. A lot of people came to watch. Les, 
Donc Anthony, sors bien tes pelles au carré. Maintiens bien l'arrière, maintiens bien l'appui. 100 years later, the Seine was not chosen as a venue for the Olympic rowing events. Over a century, the discipline has changed a lot. A certain depth is needed, width too. Barges circulate here all the time, they would need to completely close the basin. The height of the water changes according to the tide. It's complicated to organize races on a river. The young rowers agree. Their sport is very different from the one practiced in 1924. It's surprising to see the evolution of the boats compared to what we have today. We recognize their shape, but they were big wooden boats. That's completely changed. It's crazy to think that in the past 100 years, so much has changed. The club has sent rowers to two different Olympics, in Moscow in 1980 and in Barcelona in 1992. Becoming an Olympic champion is still the dream here. An Olympic title is a life goal. That's what we're training for. It's the Holy Grail. That's what we absolutely must achieve. Paris 1924, Paris 2024. Years have gone by, places have changed, but the passion is the same. The dream has not disappeared.